actually hash we do have hash in c++ so many people don't know that you know actually if you see this is available in your programming and unordered map or unordered set they both use this inside them and yeah first of all let me clear this like if you are listening to this hash video like current video for knowledge purpose then you should go and watch my other videos where I have explained like what hashing is, why you should use you hashing and what is rehashing and so many things about hashing. Here it is about std hash, which is available in C++ and what you can make out of this is what we'll learn in this video. So I told you, right? Like we have unordered map and unordered set. They both use std hash inside them. Now for quick this thing I will give you, let's say you are giving some string like maybe uh, CPP nuts. This is your string. You want to store it and you must be knowing like what is hash function. Hash function will convert this data into some number or whatever so that this number will be used for lookup purpose. So this CPP nuts can be a very big long string like, hey, I'm going to my home. So this is very good length right if you have stored this uh, length data in your array or somewhere you have to keep on checking the entire string rather you can just simply convert this string to a mapped smaller string or smaller number let's say one two three seven eight nine eight five so it is still a bigger number but relatively smaller than the high i am going to my home something like that so or maybe the stringer uh, string is like two three paragraphs then if you want to match that that paragraph is available here, you may have to perform a very big comparison to just conclude that, okay, I have really found out that paragraph. But the smartest way is whenever you are going to store that, but the smartest way is you get that paragraph, just assume it is like maybe 100 characters paragraph. You want to store it and want to know that, okay, this paragraph is available or not. Just simply map it with some unique numbers that mapping is done using function which is called hash function all that is available in this you don't have to worry about that i'll show you that in this program so let's suppose you have mapped this to maybe four three two five six eight this number so instead of comparing this much big stuff you just happen to compare this or i should say you will understand this more when you will watch my previous videos or hashing there i have talked about this in more detail and full explained way okay so this i'm keeping for i mean a uh, more shorter way so now you understand the point like what is the hash doing here so let's see the program now so if you see here we are creating hash and yeah it's a template class so it will take the type so here we are giving integer type so i'm calling it int hash and you can give number or whatever integer value you want to give at the runtime, it will give you what hash it is thinking it should have. Okay. So similarly, you can have a string hash. So you will see that. Okay. Hello. You can write anything. Hello. Uh, there I am studying. Don't disturb me. Okay. This can be a very big string. I'm just keeping very small and then it will give you the hash of that string. And we have this user defined data type also. So we'll see how you can give the option to this std hash that, okay, if something is user defined, then calculate the hash function like this. Okay. So let's go for the output. It got compiled. And if I'll just run this output is hash value of 42 is still 42 because it's a number. So better you go with the number, but hash value of hello. Actually, this is not hello. I am just keeping it hello. So it is printing hello, but hash value of hello there. I'm studying. Don't disturb me is just this much. So instead of comparing that much, you can just simply compare this much. And this is going to be same. If I'll run this again, you will see this number is always same to this. So it is actually mapping this to this number. I mean, if I'll just make it one here and now if I'll try to compile again, let's see what the difference would be. Okay. If I now compile it and run this, see that number is totally different. And now if I'll run this again, it is going to be the same name. Just you added one here and the entire world have changed. See, it was seven zero two and so something. It is now two zero two nine. So this is inbuilt function. It is doing for you. 
you can also provide if you want to and if i'll bring it back like if i'll remove that one from here let me just compile again and run this see that number is back 702821 see it's the same so this is the beauty of the hash function now let's talk about the user defined okay let me just little bit clear it and this is where the user defined would come and you will have to give if something is making sense for you so this is right now an example that okay hash function for user defined type where it has one value and another value so a hash function i mean hash value for that should be the xor of the both which will be the unique number for the combination of two numbers so this is one example you can have your own function this is just for the demonstration purpose so now you might be thinking that okay rupesh you are telling these things about hash this hash is available in my unordered map or unordered set i would just directly go and use them right like why would i write my own data structure and then use this hash and that and like have 10 different things implemented by myself why i can't just simply go and use a standard map sorry unordered map or unordered set you can do that dude but sometimes you need more and more flexibility in terms of your application that you will not get in already given data structures like unordered set and map because someone else have implemented that and with the mindset that we will have to keep it general but still it cannot be so general so if you really feel that okay i will go for my own data structure then you don't have to write the hash hash is already available this is that hash you will use okay and the best use case of this guy is see it just mapped this much big string to a relatively very small number okay so the lookup becomes very fast and that is the whole point behind the hashing you want to map a bigger data which is like n dimensional data to some relatively smaller number or smaller data so that you can have a faster lookup and say that okay this is available in the table or it is not available in the table so if you think you have learned something new today don't forget to share it with your friends and hit that subscribe button man if you want to see more videos like this i'll see you in the next videos bye bye take care